Okay, so as I was saying, friends, yes, as I was saying, friends, that Jesus was there with us since the beginning. From the time the creation happened, God, Jesus was with God. He was in the, in the Garden of Eden. He was at the time there when Adam and Eve were created. He was there, with, as I said, with Noah and the destruction would happen with the flood. He was there with Abraham and the promise given to Abraham. He was there with Moses as he was assigned to go and, uh, and, and go, to, go to Egypt and release the Israelites from there. He has been there with us human beings right from the time when we have been created. And, that, and as I say, Jesus is there with us today also. And his promise is that he will be with us in the future. And that is about Jesus. Jesus with us, Jesus with us, Jesus with us. What about us? What about you and me? Can we say the same thing to Jesus? Or can Jesus say the same thing about us? That we were there where we are with him in the past. We don't have to go into, 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 into ages. But in the past few years, few weeks, few months, few days, are we with, with Jesus today? And what about the future? We will, we were, will we be with him in the future also? Friend, if someone asks you this question, if someone asks you if your life is centered on Christ, how would you respond? Can I have some answers from you, some feed? How would you respond if someone asked you, is your life centered on Christ? One church, I'm waiting for your response, reply. Somebody. Well, there is an attempt to be centered. Um, I'm going to be very honest. On a daily basis, praying, seeking the word, or checking on myself, mm -hmm. that is my desire. But I feel I've fallen far short at many times. And... It's a work in progress. He's done his part. There's definitely he's done his part. It's our response. So it is a daily work, like how we pray that prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We speak it every day. We're asking for fresh manna, providence of his grace every day. Very true, very true. Anybody else would like to share something? Um, yes. I, I know that the Lord is is should be the center of my life, but I know many, many areas where he's pushed to the side and I'm trying to work things out on my own. <clears throat> and when I fail and stumble, there are many times I'll go back to him and it's like, he was there all the time, but where was I? Yeah. So, and, and, there, and when I reflect back on my life and I see the, the times where he was, in, you know, the Lord of my heart and, you know, the love that I've, you know how, when you first fall in love and I say, Lord, I want, I want that again with you, yes. but it's something that I need to take time and effort because God is always there. Mm -hmm. I need, I need to, to carve out that time. And this is what, when lately the word, you know, the, the, the word that do we love the world more or do we love him more? What are the things that we can, you know, take out of our lives and glean out our lives and, it's just like any relationship. If you give time to it, it 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 is it becomes more beautiful. But my wonder is that the Lord is so amazing and so patient with us. It's just like it's un unbelievable His love for us. That's so true. These plus, uh, if there's a, anybody else want to share something. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, you know, it should be 100% centered around Jesus. But uh, again, we fall short all the time. And uh, for myself, I would say I can go to a certain percentage, but I do fall short. And uh, it is my desire, yes, to be focused on Christ. But uh, it's, again, amazing, like what Chitra said, that it's amazing how he never leaves us. He never base his love on how much we contribute or how much we center our lives around him. Yeah. 
Exactly. So it's amazing, and I cannot be grateful enough. So true, so true. Very rightly spoken, and thank you for your for your for what for sharing your views. You know, normally it is it is assumed that if we go to church, if we read the read the Bible, if we pray, if we give, if uh, we, we talk to others about Jesus, normally these are the things which are considered as yes, my life is centered around Christ. Yes, these are there. But these, there are so many challenges that we face and we can never be 100% of what God would like us to be because of our own shortcomings. Nothing that the Lord has not done for us. It is our own shortcomings which prevent us from giving 100% of our love and affection to God. But, you know, uh, going to church, reading the Bible, praying, or talking to, uh, to, uh, to people about Jesus, these are good things. These are good things that we need to continue doing. We should not be stop, stopping this. We should be continuing. But we need to be aware that sometimes these activities that we do may not be Christ-centric. There could be our own selfish interest embedded in that. Why we go to church? Maybe we have a problem. We, we, we go there because we feel good. Or it is, it's a change from, 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 from uh, the routine. So we, some, some people go to church for that reason. Praying. We pray for when, there, when there's a need. Then there's a, there's a requirement. Why we go situations where we want God to intervene and help us and bless us. It could be guilt. It could be guilt why uh, we, we, we are trying to do good, good deeds to help out others. Sometimes it's a good feel factor. You feel really good when you do good deeds for others. You help others. You feel really good and blessed. But again, there's a thin line drawn in between. Are we doing it for self? Are we doing it for Christ? And today we will look into this. What does it mean to have a Christ-centered life? You know, in addition to what we have spoken, uh, uh, what we have discussed, a Christ-centered life begins with realizing that he is the source of our existence. He is the source of our very existence. If he had He had not been there, we would have not existed at all. If he had not created us, we would have been not, not, not in existence at all. So he created us, he owns us, he has gifted us with talents, he authors our story, and every blessing which we receive comes from him only. So the first fact is a Christ-centric life begins by acknowledging that he is the source of our existence. It's not about me or myself, it is about him. It is because of him that we exist. Second is, he is the force behind our actions. You know, um, like I said about good deeds, we may do a lot of good deeds, but if it is not motivated or, or it's not to give glory to God, then it is to give glory to ourselves. He is a force behind our actions, a thought, word, and deed. He is above all relationships. He is above all relationships, be it spouse, be it children, be it parents. He is above all relationships. He is a recipient of all glory honor and praise. I'm not saying that uh, we should not have that, uh, our personal goals for which we, we should pursue and, and uh, be honored for that. I'm not saying that, yes, we need to have personal goals. We need to pursue them. We need to be successful in, the, in, in, in that race. But when it comes to glory, receive the glory and give it to God. Because it, if God had not been with us, his glory would not, never have come to us at all. So we need to be, be aware of these important factors for leading a Christian, a Christ-centered life. A Christ-centered life. But tell me something. If Do you really think that life centered around Jesus is possible? Or a family centered around Jesus, is it possible? A nation centered around Jesus is possible? Let's go beyond that. The country or the whole world centered around Jesus, is it possible? My answer is yes. My answer is yes. 
Yes, only if you and I are willing. Are you hearing me, friends? It is possible only if you are you and I are willing. It all depends upon you. It all depends upon you. And I'm telling you, you this, this, this is the very truth. The city, the nations, the world have their life centered around Jesus. It is possible, but it only depends upon you and me. And how is it possible? Let me explain it to you. This is you, right? And this is your family. This is your neighborhood. This is your city. This is your country and your world. And now, now let me explain to you how you can impact, make an impact which can lead on to your country having the, their life centered around Jesus. You see, when you, you lead your own life which is centered around Jesus, God through the Holy Spirit will come to live in you. Now imagine if somebody comes to stay with you in your own home, in your own house, you will have to make some changes there. In your working habits, in, in the house itself, you will have to make some changes to accommodate that person. Similarly, when Jesus comes to stay in us and makes our body, his temple, some changes come naturally happen in us. We may want it to happen, we may not want it to happen. That's a different issue, but those changes will come about. It will come about. And sometimes you do not are you not even aware of those changes which have already happened in, 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 in your body, in your nature, in the, the way of your thinking, and in, in you basically. Friends, when God starts to stay in you, changes will take place in you. Your lifestyle will change. Friends, again, I say it is not something that happens intentionally. It may happen to you and sometimes you may, may not be even aware of it. It is only when somebody else notices it that you realize, oh yeah, that's true. I've changed on this front. And I can give you a good example about myself itself. You know, when I, in India we have, we had we have we used to have a car and I used to love driving. But the problem was before coming or before being uh, 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 coming back to Christ, before coming back to Christ, Whenever I had the opportunity to drive, I was driving and I used to get involved in so many road rages. I mean, arguments on the road, so many. And I used to, how can this person go ahead of me? Why is this person not moving fast enough? And I used to get upset and angry and so, so many fights I have encountered into and me and my friends. But when I came to Christ and Christ started to live in me, things changed. And after that, I didn't feel the need to, to have an argument. Okay, that person has gone ahead of me. I never realized that person has gone ahead of me. Or the person is slow in front of me. Fine, it's okay. I can, I can, I can wait, nothing, there's no big hurry. And this thing, I never noticed it except for my friends. Because they had not changed. It is I who had changed. So when, when I was quiet, I didn't do anything. They were surprised, Ashish, what's wrong? Something has happened with you. You're not angry anymore. You're not, you don't get upset uh, on, on these matters. So that gave me a good chance to speak about Jesus to them. And this is what has happened to me ever since I've started re-going to church, submitting myself to Jesus. And that of course raised a lot many questions and hopefully I was able to answer, answer to them and uh, pray that it would be in their hearts also. So friends, when you come to Jesus, when, when Jesus comes into your life, some changes happen automatically. And I'm going to share with you some of them. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18, though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. So here we see, we are talking about joy inexpressible and glorious and heavenly joy you know it's important to understand the difference between joy and happiness i'm not talking about happiness i'm talking about joy 
happiness is when something you it happens and you feel happy about it for example a birthday or a festival uh, a promotion or childbirth marriage these are these are depending your happiness depends upon occasions things to happen but joy is much deeper it comes from the heart it comes from the heart filled by by, by the holy spirit and it is so strong that even if you are you are facing a trials and turbulences in life you will be filled with joy just imagine you will be filled with joy you will not be afraid you will not be fearful that's one distinction and the people will see wow this person this family is going through troubles but they are so joyful they are smiling they are happy second point friends psalm 48 says in peace i will both lie down and sleep for you alone o lord make me dwell in safety so what comes across here is peace peace beyond all human understanding it's a heavenly peace which comes to us when the lord comes to to live in us we are at peace we don't need to worry about anything you even worst of situations friends we will not panic we will not panic we read psalm 23 today it says there even if we walk through the valley of shadow of death we will not be afraid we will be at peace why because we know that the lord is leading us here the lord is in us so we will not be afraid we will be at peace first corinthians 14:33 says god is not the author of confusion but of peace god is not the author of confusion but of peace order friends things would be in order automatically because god is does not bring about confusion god may allow confusion in our lives but then it's a different it could be for a different reason for for a different purpose altogether but when god is there with us things would be in order we and how how to explain it let assume you will know your priorities and your priorities will be in the right order what needs to come first what needs to come next and the next and the next and the next it brings clarity of mind and thought it means making the right choices friends spiritual discipline steps in spiritual discipline steps in here first peter 4:10 says each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully administering administering god's grace in its various forms so what comes out here very prominently is serving others again if you look at this verse you are serving according to the gifts you have received god's grace which you have received you you are, you, you are required to use that in serving others faithfully administering god's grace in various forms you know when god decides in you you become humble you become humble and are more than willing to do things for others it's not about your being happy it's about the other person being happy and that smile on that other person's face it speaks it gives you the satisfaction that you have been looking for throughout your life you know recently i went to home of loving faithfulness and with with the with the blankets which uh, uh, brother kamal and sister pinky had arranged for and i didn't take it so seriously that they were they were such such a need for for those blankets that uh, i delayed it for a week for my personal reasons and then finally when they said no no uh, pastor we need them urgently if you can get it to them get it to us it will be good it was late in the, in the in the night but still i went there and when i went there 
and when they opened the the packet uh, in front of me when they opened the packet i mean there was a, such a gleam in their eyes that as if tears were there they had been asking for this and god has provided them this and even just seeing them even even i had tears in my eyes why did i delay i was really cursing myself why did i delay this, they needed this i have we had this for a long time why did they not come here earlier to give it to them and they needed these these light ones itself which the the helpers they have they needed these light ones which they they could just wrap around or put it or put it on 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 the people there friends service servicing others it starts to come naturally in us that's some of the big change others first before me others first before me Luke six verse thirty eight says, "Give, and shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, it will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you." I'm talking about giving, giving. Friends, it's not about the giving that I'm, I'm the giving that we do in the church, the offering, or the tithes. When the Holy Spirit comes into you, when the Lord lives in you, you feel more blessed to give to the people. You you will feel more blessed to share with the people what you have. It could be your time. It could be just your presence there. It could be anything. It could be anything, and the Lord will bless you in all of that. you know you are happy to serve others their smile sometimes start to seem important to you more than your own smile their smiling faces are more important to you than your own smiles friends these are just such a few which i have which i have picked up I don't think i have any other now and if we add to it the uh the the seven topics that we have taken up this year believe faith perseverance hope and be still all these come to us naturally if the lord is living in us if he lives in us he dwells in us if we are his temple and all of and all of that while we are able to uh, to to minister to other people to serve other people to give to the other people the lord is blessing us in everything that we do i was sure i was sharing with luke 6 verse 38 it says give it shall be given to you give and it shall be given to you friends we are called to give to others we are called to serve others we are called to bring joy to other people's life we are we are called to speak peace in into people's life and shallow and peace into people's life we are called to guide the the other people who are in confusion so that their house may be in order friends if we do not have these things in our own life how do you think are we going to minister to other people it is so important that we have a christ centric life because when we have a christ centric life all these qualities these characteristics these attributes come into us automatically because the lord, the lord starts to live in us you know there are much more traits of if you look in the bible you find much more traits, but these are the few things which i thought maybe i will share with you and how does it impact the world the nation the city your family your loved ones your family uh, your friends your family your friends your loved ones will see these changes in you it cannot go unnoticed they may not speak it at the at the moment but they will observe this they will see this there is a change in this person it's very natural that we we notice these changes 
if there's a change in 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 a parent's lifestyle we know it if there's a change in in a spouse's lifestyle we notice it if there's a change in the lifestyle of a children we notice it so here if the lord is bringing so many changes in a person's life they cannot go and notice that mind you friends these are good changes these are qualities and the attributes which we would like to see not only in ourselves but also in the other person in all of the world world people but then again it depends upon you it entirely depends upon you today you and me are blessed to be children of god we are blessed to know jesus right we are blessed to know jesus but jesus was born in israel he was born he died there and he was resurrected in israel do you know the total distance between hong kong and israel it is 7774 kilometers 7774 kilometers is the distance between hong kong and israel so if the disciples did not take it up, take it up upon himself we would have not come to know about jesus he would have been a figure for us he would have been a figure in israel's history as a man who was crucified maybe in a history book we would have read we would have studied about him that's all we would have never come to know about jesus as the son of god as god himself god reincarnated but it all started it all it all became possible because the disciples took it upon themselves they devoted their life to be a christ centric life and that pushed them that encouraged them that motivated them to take the good news to the masses to the ends of the world it is possible friends with you it is possible with you is it going to be easy no it will not be easy it will not be easy if i ask you for the reasons i am sure that most of you will say because of satan and satan's forces who will try to come against us well that is true but that is not entirely true yes the negative forces will soon realize that they have lost their grip on you and soon enough they will realize that they are losing grip on the people who are around you because the other people are getting influenced by god being in you your qualities your godly qualities and they definitely will not like it so what they will do they will try to make it make it difficult for you and your loved ones but then they can only enter our lives friend hear me carefully they can only enter your life they can only enter my life if you allow or i allow them to do it are you getting it if we allow them to enter into our life then only they will enter i'm not saying that uh, you open the doors and welcome them into your life no i'm not talking about the there are people who who have recently told me that i like to open the door to 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 devil that's a different scenario altogether different thing altogether but if you open the door for them they will definitely come in but what do they need they need only a small space a small space a small teeny weeny small sin that we commit a small compromise that we do in terms of of god's commandments we think it's fine we it's not every day i do it sometimes i do have i've done it fine and it's not harming anyone we have all the reasons and all the rational and all the reasons behind it but for god a sin is a sin no matter how big or small and that is enough friends that is enough for the evil forces to be able to make entry into your into your life into my life but if we stand strong 
if we stand bold, if we continue to hold on to the cross, these forces would be defeated. These forces would be defeated, friends. So again, I say, friends, it depends upon you and me. You and me alone. You know, uh, uh, always earlier I always used to say that we are broken people and we make mistakes again and again. But now I don't say that. Because I feel that we human beings have taken this brokenness as a very common excuse to be able to commit sin. We are broken. So we are at fault. We, we will commit sin. There's, there's, there's no way. And to top it all, they go on to say, we are saved by grace. The Lord is so merciful. He will save us. He will not let us go down. Friends, don't be uh, uh, disillusioned in this. A sin is a sin. For every sin, there has to be consequences. There has to be consequences. You may not be held accountable in terms of yes, you may not have to face that punishment, but somebody else, God, Jesus will have to. He'll have to be crucified. Whenever we are sinning, we are putting him on the cross where the, from where the Father has resurrected him. Friends, we are not broken people, but because we have given we have we have we have given it as it is taken as an excuse for us to continue to sin. We are broken, yes. The Bible says yes. Everybody falls short of the glory of God. That's fine. I totally agree that we can never be perfect people because of the inherent sin in our nature. All have sinned and all have fallen, will fall short of the glory of God. You know, friends, a few days back, I had a chance to meet up a couple with, with a couple who had been facing marital problems for a very long time. And they were on the verge of divorce. They were already basically separated, but they were on the verge of divorce. So many people tried to counsel them. So many people tried, tried to talk to them. Even we were, we, we were involved in, in, with them. So GMS, we tried to minister to them, uh, pray, praying for them. Then finally one day, it dawned on us that this is something beyond us. We may continue doing it for years, but it is not going to, to yield any result. So what is the best thing we need to do? Take it and put it to God. Jesus, this is beyond me. We cannot do it because this requires a change of heart. And changing heart is God's work, not us. And that's what exactly we did. Friends, last week, we had a chance of meeting them for lunch, they invited us for lunch. And in the lunchtime, they they basically wanted to thank thank us and uh, for our effort in praying for them. And I mean, was so happy and so pleased to see that the fire, the, the fire in their life, the love has been rekindled. They, they, they were so much, they, it was as if they have, they have restarted their life. They fall in love once again with each other. And it, it, it you know, Sometimes it's hard, it's hard to believe it, hard to digest it, hard to accept it. So what I did was I tried to cross check it with somebody who is very close to them. And I call that person and I ask that person, this is what my observation is. Is it true? And that person said, yes, you are very right. Things have changed a lot in, in the relationship. And I just thank the Lord. God, thank you for doing this. I hope and pray that they will continue to draw closer to each other as they draw close to God and God continue to do his good work in their life. But that doesn't mean that they have become perfect. You know, in fact, uh, there is no perfect couple or no perfect family ever uh, uh, in, in, in this world. And that reminds me of a movie. I don't know whether you have seen this movie or not. Uh, that came years back about people, about couples going in for, for honeymoon. I think honeymoon travels, something like that. And it was five, six couples going in for, for honeymoon together. And they reached this, this, uh, this resort where they're going to spend some time. And these couples of various age groups, 
some who are who have been recently married instead of age group also different age group but also in different stages of life so newly married remarried divorced and married uh, people of age who have, have age and after they had they had uh, they were they had married off their children then they, they came together to remarry so those people were there and so were five six couples were there different couples and there was one this couple there who were unique they they young couple who had been married for some time they they used to do everything perfect they knew what the other person would want like so accordingly they would do it both of them and it was a very strange and uh, you could not digest that that sort of a relationship when you see it so other people also were there other families uh, couples were there and they used to have the regular of fights normal no 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 normal normal arguments but these people never used to have that and the other couple used to wonder how is it possible that you don't have any fights and when they used, they used to speak to this couple they said no we never had a fight in so many years of of the marriage there were no disagreements no fights everything was so nice so sweet and natural and that is what the movie was showing us in the in the, in the movie it, they, they they revealed that these two people were superhumans like superman or wonder woman like that so they had everything perfect but for normal human beings we are at fault we are broken we have our faults in us so we can never be perfect friends only super human beings can be perfect so as i was saying friends if we stand bold and strong holding on to the cross these evil forces will be defeated when the attacks come it is these jesus centric attributes which i was speaking to you about these attributes these jesus centric attributes that will help us defeat them am i to that i'm sure friends you would want to know that if you really love jesus and want your family and friends to love jesus you would want to lead a christ centric life and you would like to know how let me tell you one thing you are already on that route you are already doing things which you need to do to ensure that your life is christ centric you're almost there you just need a little bit of deviation a little bit of pruning here and there a little bit bit of motivation a little bit of push a little bit of pull and i'm telling you friends you and i can have a christ centric life let let me bring them to you let me bring them to you continue to attend church you are attending church definitely now what i want you to take is the next step in this what is the next step instead of only attending church look at building a relationship with the church not with the people continue to attend the church but now instead of only attending the church start to look at building a relationship with the church what does it mean be willing to take up responsibilities for the church you know when 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 the church will reopen arch and master we go there earlier and when you when you when you guys come in you see everything is in order start to take part spirit to part spirit in that setting up the chairs tidying up the chairs dusting the chairs the table setting up the altar as there are so many things which are there for the food table and everything start taking up responsibility no matter how big or small but like i said today today i'll be going there uh, to the church to clean to, for cleaning so if you want to join me please do join me second thing is continue to pray but now instead of praying about your challenges in your prayer thank god for being there in those challenges that means while the, the challenges are continue to remain in your life thank god that in those challenges which you are facing he is with you 
he is with you. That's an affirmation that he is there with you. You know, a God-centered life is a life of consistent prayer. And Jesus taught his life, his, his disciples, to always pray and never to give up. You can talk to God, not just in church or in set times, but anywhere at any time. I was taught, you know, I was taught very early in my, in my Christian walk, walk that I need to talk as you walk with God. So I'm telling you, friends, whenever I go out, be it with my dog or to the, to the mall to get something, the, 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 the time I, I walk to reach that place, I continue speaking to him. Just normal things. Normal things. You don't have to be in a, in a position, uh, in a state of position to pray that you need to kneel down, close your eyes and join your hands to pray. No, you can continue to pray. Make it make pray your lifestyle. Whatever you, whatever you're doing, continue to pray to God. Continue, continue to speak to God. Continue to ask God. Don't give up, friends. Don't give up when you do not get the answers for what you ask you. Persevere. You know, Jesus tells us a parable about the widow and the unjust judge. And the, and the unjust judge was not listening to the pleas of the widow. But the widow did not give up. She continued to persevere, continued to be after the, the unjust judge until the time the unjust judge gave in and said, okay, I will give you, I will, I will give you justice. And in giving this example, Jesus said, if an unjust ju judge could listen to the pleas of a woman who had been persistent in, in putting up his, her pleas, then a just God, a loving God, a merciful God, will he not listen to your pleas? So we need to continue to ask, not, not to give up. Continue to read the word of God, friends. But now, as you continue to read the word of God, apply the word of God into your life. Take the next step forward. Take the next, next challenge. Not only reading, but applying it into your life. Applying it into your life. Friends, I'm telling you, once you start doing that, every word in the Bible will become life to you. It will be a living word for you. And it will reveal to you deeper truths. Continue to worship. Friends, it's not about only when we come to the church, when, when the worship team is there, they play and we stand up and worship the Lord. What are we doing when we are at home right now in, the, in these times, when the worship songs are being played? Are we worshiping? Are we doing our own work? Friends, it's important. Worship means in truth and spirit. When worship is there, lift your hands, close your eyes, and worship and sing along. Sing along. And you will be much, much, much blessed. If you look into the Psalms, you will see in many places, the Psalmists have written there that how we need to worship the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Clap your hands. Cry out with joy. Make a loud noise to the Lord. When you worship, friends, lift your hands. When you worship, friends, close your eyes and worship Him. Continue to do a self-check upon yourself. And it is very important. And it is very scary. And we do not want to do it. A self-check. Because we know the flaws in us. But it is important that we do a self-check upon us on a periodic basis. Today, if Jesus comes, do we qualify to be with him in his kingdom? Have we done anything which is worthy enough for us to be with him, to stand with him, or to face him? Friends, continue to search your heart and be humble. Humility is not something that comes naturally to human beings. I'm telling you, rather than exalting yourself, you are supposed, you and me are supposed to humble ourselves. And in that God will exalt us. 
God will, it doesn't matter. I mean, even the self-check, we fail. But if we humble ourselves, God, the Father, will exalt us. Continue to forgive. It is so important. It is so important. It's not just saying the Lord's Prayer and saying, Lord, forgive us as we forgive those who, who, who sin against us. It's not merely uh, uttering of those words in the prayer, but we are putting into application and we need to forgive the people. We need to release the people because it's a command from God. So if our life is Christ-centered, this challenge, we think it's a big challenge. No, if a life is Christ, it becomes an easy task because God gives us the courage to do it. Continue to serve. Jesus himself did not come on this earth to be served. He came to serve. He, son of God, king of kings, lord of lords, if he came to serve, then what are we supposed to do? Be served or to serve? Continue to follow Jesus. Friends, we have been doing this for so many years. But now I ask you, I urge you, I encourage you to do it with more zeal and more boldness and more commitment. There's nothing more rewarding than following Jesus, friends. If there is, let me know. If there's anything more rewarding than following Jesus, please let me know. Because, because for me, there's nothing more rewarding than following Jesus. You know, Peter said to Jesus, we have left all we had to follow you. And Jesus replied to them, I tell you the truth. No one has left home or wife or brother or sister or parents or children for the sake of the, of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and the age to come, eternal life. Eternal life. Friends, we come to the table of our Lord. We come to the table of our Lord right now. And I want you to you just, just pick, pick up the cup and the, and, and the bread that you, hold, that you have prepared for today, for the Holy Communion. Just hold it in your hand. And allow me to pray, pray for it. Our Father Lord, we thank you, Jesus. That even, Lord, if when we are far off from each other, Lord, we are able to partake in the with, with you, Lord. Our Father Lord, the emblems that we are holding in our hands, Lord Jesus, we ask for your blessings to rest upon them, Lord. It could be juice, it could be anything, Lord Jesus. But Lord, it represents your blood. And the bread, Lord Jesus, represents your body, which was broken for us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, who, who you are, Lord. And Lord, what we are to you, Lord Jesus. Our Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that, Lord, we have, we realize that, Lord, that we are doing things, Lord Jesus, which are pleasing to you, Lord. We are moving towards uh, making a life being your centric to you, Lord Jesus. But, Lord, we also know that fact that we have not yet reached it is work in progress, Lord Jesus. So, Father Lord, we ask for your blessings to rest upon us, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Lord, as we partake in this together, Lord, we ask for your blessings to be with us, Lord Jesus. Lord, as we pick up this bread, Lord, which represents your body, Lord, which was broken for us, Lord. We want to say thank you to you, Lord Jesus, for where, Lord, you have brought us thus far, Lord. Yes, Jesus, thus far, Lord, you have brought us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. We may not be there yet, Lord Jesus. We may not be 100%, Lord, where you want us to be, Lord. We, 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 we cannot say with the hand on a heart, Lord, that yes, my life is Christ-centric, Lord. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, from where we were, you picked us up, Lord Jesus, and brought us thus far, Lord. 
Lord, I say thank you to you, Lord. Let's eat of the bread together, thanking the Lord for bringing us here in this position where we are today. Lord, as we hold this cup, Lord Jesus, we ask for your blessings, Lord Jesus. We ask for your blessings on this cup, Lord, this juice, Lord Jesus. And we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the blood that you shed for us, Lord. Through your shedding, Lord Jesus, of, of your blood, Lord, we get saved, Lord. We get remission from our sin, Lord Jesus. Our sins, our sins are washed, Lord Jesus. Today, Lord, as we drink of this, of this, Lord Jesus, Lord, we drink it in expectation and anticipation, Lord, for the, for the good work that you continue to do in our lives, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we may, we may, we may not be 100% where you want us to be, Lord, but Lord, you will bring us to that stage, Lord, where our lives would be 100% centric to you, Lord Jesus, to your purposes in our life, Lord. So we thank you, Jesus. Let's drink of the cup together. You may keep it aside, friends. You know, I wanted to show you a video here, but we can we cannot show the video. You know, God is working with you. And this is an example of uh, which we are shared to me with my, by, by my boss when I was going through tough times. And she showed me this bow and arrow. She said that the Lord is pulling you back. That's what I felt that whatever I had achieved, which I had targeted for, aimed, I was not able to reach it. In fact, I was being pulled back. And she told me that the Lord is pulling you back because he wants that, that your arrow, that you reach afar. Friends, Today, in our own limited capabilities or abilities, we have limited reach and we have limited, a very restricted scope. But once we surrender ourselves to God and make a life centric to Jesus, it becomes the limit, the reach becomes unlimited and the scope becomes unrestricted. That is the promise from God. That is his promise to us. You know, and uh, Okay, it's coming again. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. In Romans 15, verse 13, it is written there. May the, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and faith so that you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is a good prayer. This is a good wish. This is a good desire to, to, to have for others. Right now, may I ask you to just close your eyes and remember those people who you want to say this prayer for. This prayer is there on screen. And I give you one minute. I know the time is uh, we have, we have past our time, but I'll, I'll just take five more minutes to say this prayer for the person who is who you love and want to share God's love with. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this time. Lord, thank you for your presence here, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. To you, Lord, we want our life to be centric to you, Lord, fulfilling your purposes, Lord Jesus. In our own strength, Lord, it is not possible, Lord Jesus. So, Lord, we ask you come and live in us, Lord. Continue to fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so that we may be able to continue doing your good work, Lord Jesus. Lord, today, Lord, we submit and surrender ourselves to you, Lord. Have it your way in our lives, Lord Jesus. Let your will be done in our lives, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this word, Lord. Thank you. You help us to apply it in our lives, Lord. In your name, Lord, we say, Amen. Amen.